Jessica Lynn of JessicaLynnOriginal.com and I am going to show you how I made this card. It is featuring one of the new dog stamps from JessicaLynnOriginal.com called Flynn's Puppies. This one features an adorable little pug. I've done a lot of die cuts lately, so I wanted to do one where it was really all about the image and some paper. So I found this really pretty, it's um, like a floral background, so you can see there's little butterflies on it. So I thought that'd be really pretty. It's almost like the pug is playing in the grass. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and glue it to my cardstock. All right, now that I've got this cute little flower paper on the card, I always sign the back of my cards. Oh, and you can see on my right hand there, I've got a little blue finger. We just finished coloring Easter eggs, so sorry about the blue finger. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fold this in half, and I'm just gonna use a little bone to go ahead and just make it nice, a nice good press on there. All right, so now I've got the background, if you will, of my card. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this adorable pug, and it is a pug from a brand new stamp set here at JessicaLynnOriginal.com. It is called Flynn's Puppies. And then I stamped a whole sheet, probably way too many flowers, I think I'm not gonna use that many, but I stamped a whole sheet of flowers, and the flowers are also part of the stamp set. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get out my Copic markers, and I am gonna color this adorable pug in. Now when I color in any of my stamps using my Copics, again, just a small word of advice, always start lightest and build your colors up. So you can see here I'm building up a light shadow of a very tan colored, uh, fawn almost colored pug. So I'm gonna then go to a darker color and I'm gonna start building up his shadows. And know that you don't always have to use gray or black to do shadows and highlights. You can use other darker versions of the color you're already using to build up shadows. So you can see I'm doing a little bit of that right now. And what you can see is as I'm building up color around his face, I'm not making his face black. I'm making it very dark. Oh, there goes my marker. I'm making it very dark, but I'm just using a buildup of colors to get it where I want to go. I think it has a much stronger sense. Um, and the other thing is I don't want to lose all of the details in the face. So I'm very cautious to make anything too dark. Now let's go ahead and color in his little eyes. Now I know traditionally a pug doesn't have blue eyes, but I really think for this card, I just want something that pops. So I'm gonna go ahead and find some blues and color it in. Again, one of the tips that I use is that I will do a lighter color on the top part of the eye and a darker color on the bottom, which really just makes the eyes stand out. Sometimes when I color with my Copic markers, depends on the kind of paper that I use, sometimes it'll bleed a little bit. 
So one of the tricks I use is I bought this Uniball Signo. It's a white. It reminds me of like whiteout in a pen is the best way I can describe it. And sometimes like you can see here, the little eyes, those little dots, it's so important to have those crisp because it just makes it look like the dog is looking at you or it's got like teary eye. It's so cute. So by taking the little white, now he's dancing across the page. So by taking the uniball and then filling that in, it really just makes the dog, his eyes look real. All right, I'm gonna put this in fast forward because otherwise it's gonna take forever. Now, this is one of those moments, again, I've said it way too many times, you probably don't even think I really have one, but I do have a brother scan and cut. This would be an amazing opportunity to be using that, but that means I'd have to clear off desk space and I just don't have time for it today. So I'm gonna go ahead and I, I stamped up like 16 rows or something of these little flowers and I just stamped them all over the page. And so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna quickly cut them out because the thought I had was to just make it almost look like the pug entered into a little rose garden. I thought that would be really cute. Um, now in hindsight, <laughs> what I probably should have done is before I cut them out, I probably should have colored them all. Now, knock on wood, right? I don't have carpal tunnel, but if someone did, I would encourage you to color them first. <laughs> don't try to color them when they're already this tiny. It was a pain in the butt. I opted for two colors of red Copics. I have, it's, I don't know, it's hard to tell in this video, but there's a lighter color in the middle, and then I did darker on the outside. I thought that would just sort of make them pop, and it does, when you look at the card in person, it does pop. But I decided that when I was done, I was gonna use my color Technic glitter pens and just make the flowers look glisteny, because I thought it would be pretty to make them look all dewy, like it was a morning. Now that the flowers are all colored and ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start to assemble the card. So first thing I'm gonna do is glue the pug down. I'm just gonna center him. And then from there, what I thought I would do is build a little garden around him. So I'm gonna glue a couple of them and I'm gonna glue them straight onto the page. And then what I'm gonna do is a couple of them, I'm gonna put them on foam risers because I thought then what we could do is see a little dimension where you would see some, you know, at different levels, higher, or lower. It would add shadows and interest to the card. And the best part is there's no right or wrong. I love that this is really just another expression of art. So if I wanted to, I could make the entire front of the card little flowers, or I could have done no flowers. You know, I think that being able to be creative and, you know, don't limit yourself like, oh, I need to put this many or that many. Remember that odd numbers always are more attractive when you're putting cards together. But to be honest, I mean, I used even numbers here and I think it looks so cute. It looks like he's just playing around in the flowers. I kind of felt like this card, more than the ones I've made recently, really needed some kind of sentiment. So I went ahead and pulled one of the Jessica Lynn original kids in costume. Um, this one is the You're Never Too Old to Dream set, and I just wanted to use the I Love You from it. Um, this set is available on our website, just so that you know if you're interested in picking that up. And I'm going to go ahead and just use my clear block again with the clear photopolymer stamps. What I love is that I can see where I'm going to stamp this. 
Don't get me wrong, I probably should have used my Tim Holt platform because, and you'll see it in a minute, I actually did not stamp it well enough the first time, so I had to go back and do it a second time. Although, know that even if you don't have one of those platforms, you still can reline it up and you can restamp again. So you can see it was a little light for my taste, so I went ahead and I just re-inked it up, lined it all up the best I could, and I think it looks really good. I like it just a little bit darker. I did use like a navy blue ink rather than a black because I didn't want it to overpower the card. And again, I just went ahead and put it right back into my stamp sheet. I really like how this card turned out. It was very easy to make, so it'd be really easy for you to replicate. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate the time that you take with us. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. I'm going to pop a little Brentwood up. Just click on him and subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified when we upload new videos. Also, I'm going to pop up two more videos so you can see what else we do here at JessicaLynnOriginal.com. Thank you again and have a great day.